what's going on simplifiers welcome back to dennis simplifies in today's video we are going to develop the key university grading system in java so let's simplify a social science lecturer marked her mid semester and end of semester examination scripts each over 100 instead of 30 and 70 respectively after marking she consulted you computer science student to develop a program in Java to compute the final marks of the students and also indicate the appropriate letter grade obtained by each of the students using the grading system of KNUST. Your program should output the following, the final score of each student, the grade obtained by each student, and then their index number as in the tabular form over here. Friends, from the question, we'll be taking the same input from each student, that is the index number their mid semester and then the end of semester scores. What immediately comes to mind is a loop. But what kind of a loop? A for loop. Why? We can just know the total number of students from the social science lecturer. So we know the beginning and the end of our loop. That's why we'll be using a for loop. If you look at this table over here, what comes to mind is a list or an array. But in this video, we'll just be using an array. So we are going to create three arrays, one for each column, that is one for the index number, one for final score, and then the other one for the grade. Alright friends, let's be reminded that to get the final score, we must convert the mid semester score to 30% and the exam score to 70% and then add them. Alright friends, let's take a look at our code in Java, but before that I will encourage you to pause the video give it a like and subscribe very well to our code in java because we'll be taking input from the user i import the java utility scanner now i declare a public class called main which is going to serve as the entry point for my code now inside my class i declare a function or a method called public static void main and inside these parameters, I declare a string array as an argument. Public here is an access specifier that enables other methods or classes to have access to these blocks of code. Static means it's a constant and then void is a return type, which means this method returns nothing. And the main here is the name of the method or the function. Note that the class main is camel casey main, capital M-A-I-N, and the method is, sorry, the class is Pascal Casey Main, capital M A I N, and the method or the function is Camel Camel Casey Main, which is smaller than M A E I N. Now, inside our method, I declare an object scanner of the class Scanner. Now, you see System in here. System in here mean we will be taking input from the system or from the terminal. That means we'll be taking the input from the terminal. Now I display to the user to enter the total number of students. That means from the social, the social science lecturer, I'm asking the lecturer to enter the total number of students. Now the moment the, the, the moment the user or the lecturer inputs the integer value in the terminal, I am going to scan the terminal for this integer value and store it in a variable called total number of students. As we said earlier, I am going to create three arrays, one for index numbers, one for the final scores, and then the other for the grades. So the index number is an integer, the final scores is a double, and the grades is a character. Now, because we'll be converting our mid sem and, and exam scores to 30% and 70% respectively, and these conversions are constant, we don't have to change or modify the conversions, or we don't want anybody to change or modify these conversions. So we store them in the 30% and 70% variables. The final you see in front here means they are constants and that nobody should change the conversions. I declare another variable student number and set it to one. You will understand why as you go along. Now to take the input from all the students, we set a for loop that runs for all the students. That means from one, from zero to the total number of students. Inside our for loop, I am going to print student 1. Enter your index number. Now the moment the student enters the index number, we will scan the terminal for that integer value and store it in this index number variable. And right after that, 
we are going to store that index number in the index number array. Alright, friends. Similarly, we will take the mid sem the mid semester score and then the exam score. We are going to store all of them in these variables. From there, we will convert the mid semester score to 30% and the exam score to 70%. Now we add them to get the final score. So you see the see here means the conversion of the mid semester and a conversion of the exam score. We add them to get our final score. With the final score, we will store it in we will store it also in the final scores array. This math the run you see here will run the final score. Next, we declare grade as a character and set our if statement for all the grades given the final score as a condition. So we have the grades A, B, C, D, and then F. And then if you get below 40, you get an F. So we have all of them being defined here. So whatever grade the student gets, we store it in the grades array and then increase student number by one to move to the next student. Now we close our for loop with curly braces. To move to the next line, we use system.out.println, print lean. And now on the next line, we print out the topics for our table. Remember, we are, we are, we are drawing a table. So we print out the topics for our table. The backlash tab is an escape sequence, which means the cursor should tap or leave a wide space. And then lastly, we print out all the data we stored in our three arrays. Remember, we print all of them out. And of course, in a tabular form using the print lean class instead of the print class. All right, friends, now let's run our code. Total number of students, I take four. So for students one, that's the index number and the scores for MISM and then exam scores. So this same goes for student 2, student 3, and then student 4. And on pressing enter via my keyboard, that's our table here. Alright friends, that's it for this video. Show some love by hitting the like and subscribe button. Join us on Telegram to solve programming questions every single day. Until then, a PATIA!